Radio Raheem here with Fernando Vargas. I mean, a legend in the game. You're just coming out of a boxing gym, which lets us know that <laughs> you're still at it. Uh, talk to me right now about what your days consist of. My days consist of me training my boys. You know, um, everybody goes, you don't want your, you want your kids to fight? I go, no. They go, you don't want your kids to fight? I said, no. But my compadre said it like this. Frankie Casavetes, he says, champ, you don't want your kids to fight? I said, no. And then he goes, okay, who's going to tell your kids that they can't be like their dad? Because I'm not going to tell them. Man, when you put it like that, I said, I got to do it. And nobody's going to be more, um, uh, you know, uh, knowledgeable uh, in the game than me to, to, for my kids to guide my boys. They're my flesh and blood. Is spending your days with your boys like that in a sport you love so much, maybe the greatest uh reward from the kind of career you've had yeah absolutely absolutely you know um i'm i'm blessed i'm a blessed man you know um uh it, it hits different when you didn't have a father so you know all that i'm living right now with my babies um it's a blessing to me because you know for to not have it and to and to be able to to be a man and stick it through with other you know but, you know, we're for couples, if they fight, and regardless, you know, I have a great woman. I've been lucky. You know, God took care of me. When I, once I started boxing, I started serving God. And so that's one of the reasons why, um, you know, I have a, such a great woman because of God put her in my path. What was the thing that, or many things, that you were able to impart to your sons that by not having a father when you came up in this game, Nobody imparted to you. Well, say that and repeat, repeat the question. What was it, <clears throat> or what is it, that you're in a that you're able to impart to your sons that you can teach them okay, okay. that wasn't available to you because you didn't have a father when you were coming up in this sport. Well, just uh, just a lot of like um, a lot of the stuff behind the scenes, like you know. Um, you know, you, the negotiating, the stuff like, like when they start, you know, um, they offer you something. Don't don't take that right away. You know, I mean, you learn that, you know, what I mean, and um, something that, you know, I don't have. Well, look, I, I'm here for them 110 percent, which my father wasn't there for me at 110 percent at all. So and, uh, you know, they said that, you know, you know. Is because he was in jail with well, the jail and the and the drug life and and you know it doesn't it doesn't matter you know if you want to be in some somebody's life you're gonna be in somebody's life in your kid's life if you really want to change for to be a better man I did I you know I was I was an alcoholic for a good year a good amount of years in my life uh, December first marks eight years of my sobriety and um and and I couldn't have done it without God now. Every person, every man has the right to make mistakes. But at the end of the day, when they, when they, you keep on making those mistakes, they're not mistakes, they're habits. And so, you know, um, uh, I changed for the better for my family and for my kids because I'm the one that wanted to have kids with my wife. We're kids. 15 years of age. I was 17. Uh, we had Juno when she was, when, 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 uh, when I was 18. I'm three years older than my, than my wife. And so I'm the one that wanted to have kids. And so at the end of the day, I'm not going to, you know, I, I just was not going to leave her by to raise them by, by herself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even though I became a, you know, a star in the sport and, and just the fame, the women, the, the just the, 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 the vices that, that one carries from their bloodline. Like my, our vices in, in, uh, in the Vargas bloodline is, is lust, drug abuse, and alcoholism, and so you know I felt I felt to 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 two of them, and it wasn't drug it wasn't alcohol it wasn't uh, drug abuse I tell you that much so um, I thank God that you know um, for the woman that I have and and for for sticking by me and you know now and now when I'm living with my boys is an amazing is an amazing story you know what I mean. With as much as you accomplished, and you were certainly a star in the sport, do you look back now, being more mature, having learned the lessons you just spoke about, and regret anything about the way you pursued your career 
Knowing I think I think that I think that that if um, I don't start drinking, nobody beats me. Nobody beats me. At 16, I became the youngest national champion in boxing history. My record can never be broken because as an amateur, you're 16, the minimum to become to to to, to fight at the tournament, you know, and then you're fighting men up to 32 years of age, so you're fighting men. I became an Olympian, world champion, youngest youngest Olympian, youngest uh, world champion. I did everything when youngest. When the worst mistake after I beat the brakes out of Raul Marquez, the devil was right there. I got a lawyer, Bobby Karen, that is dead now. Gave me. He goes. Congratulations, champ. And I'm in like, I'm on top of the world. I just finished knocking him out. I knocked him out in past six rounds. And I knocked him out in the 11th round. And everybody's praising me. And I'm and I'm taking pictures of everybody. And and then the devil goes like this. Congratulations, champ. And he hands me a beer. And I go, look at the beer. And I go, why not? Wait a minute. It's... I'm on top of the world. I got millions in the bank. I got my strap. I just beat his, finished beating the brakes out of a former world champion. I just, you know, beat two world champions already. You ready to become a Roman Marquez? Why not? That was the worst mistake I ever made. If I don't start drinking, nobody beats me. Because my was my, my my dedication reminds me so much of Emiliano's, my, my third son's dedication. Just like he doesn't drink, he doesn't go out. He has his girlfriend. I have my girl, you know, so uh, we're in the same boat. So, and like I said, if, if if I don't start drinking, nobody beats me. And so all this good and bad that happened in my in my in my life, I like my head is, you know, Lothar Garcia says, but I don't know, you serve that for good for your family, for your kids, so that way they don't make the same mistakes. You tell them, you know what, don't start drinking because you're going to like it. Those are, you know, being out and about because you're going to like it. So at the end of the day, um, you know, I have a lot of experience now as a as a 45-year-old man. I can't believe I'm 45. You don't see no wrinkles. You don't see no gray hairs. Porque soy indio, güey. Uh, uh, ironically, I just finished speaking to Oscar De La Hoya because clearly he's one of the promoters of the big fight. Uh, on Saturday night, and that is probably your most storied rival, your biggest uh, rival. And at the time, you were seen as the bad boy, the you know the the villain. And Oscar was the golden boy. Mm-hmm. And since both of you have finished your career, Oscar has had his share of challenges, many of which you've just discussed. When you saw him go through that. Did you feel any sense of, man, let me like reach out to this guy even after the bad blood and help? I am. Um, I have not, but, 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 you know, he's definitely in my prayers. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, um, I know what it is to battle those demons. Um, I thank God that um, it was just alcohol because if not, the devil was trying to kill me with alcohol. And so, you know, I would have, caught AIDS, I would have, something would happen. And I thank God for for, for his mercy. Um, you know, um, and I'm going to be honest with you, the reason I'm cleaned up is because of God. Mm. And the only reason that I'm cleaned up is because of God. And the Bible says that you can't, that Jesus cannot deny a contrite heart. What is that, a broken heart? So if you cry out to God and he knows if it's for real when you're crying, if, it's, if he knows if it's fake before it even comes out of your eyes, the tears. He knows what you're going to do before you even say it. Before you even do it. Or he knows what you're going to say before you even say it. But if you cry out to God, like, uh, you know, when my wife was fed up with me and says, that, that's enough, you know, she's like, she just goes, I'm, you know, I'm going to iron your stuff. I go, why? She goes, because uh, you always go out. I want to see if you want, you know, want me to iron your stuff. I go, maybe I'm not going to go tonight. Well, let me know so I can iron your stuff if you want to go. I go, you know what, well, baby, I want to stop drinking, but I, but um, but um, but I always have the urge to drink. I need you to come talk to the pastor with me. And he goes, no, nah, I'm not gonna go. You go. She was very indifferent with me, and I, so I end up going. 
I said, look, Pastor, the pastor that I was serving at the time, I don't go to that pastor no more, but God used him. He didn't, it wasn't him that healed me. It was it, God used him. God could use my wife. I could have prayed. My wife could have prayed for me and, and I could have prayed for myself and just cried to off to God. It would have happened the same way. Mm. So, so, so I go to the pastor and I go, look, pastor, I always have Thursday drink. You know, we have generational curses of lust, drug abuse, alcoholism in my bloodline. I need you to pray for me. He started praying for me. I was broken for the Lord, before the Lord. December 1st, 2014 was the last time I touched alcohol. I'm going on eight years, December 1st. And I, and it doesn't even, I'm telling you in Spanish, ni me hace cosquillas güeyes. It doesn't even, it doesn't tickle, even tickle me. Before, for one year by myself, I did it straight. And I was miserable. I wanted to drink, and then I go, I go to to the boxing event. Peros, come here, we got, we got, we got, we got drinks for you. Now I can go to amongst people that are drinking, and I don't even, I don't feel nothing. My King of Kings, my Lord of Lords, and I've been serving because I was 12 years old. Don't, don't guys, I don't guys want you guys to think. Now I was cat, Catholic before. Now I became a Christian when I became here in Vegas, and I came to Vegas like drunk. Now, don't think that this is something new that. That I'm that I'm doing here with, with the serving God. I've been serving God since I was 12 years old. That's why He helped me break history in four years, become an Olympian, become a superstar in the sport, HBO fighter. Come on, man! I go, I I give glory where glory is due. It wasn't me. It was him. I have to ask because I came up watching fighters like yourself. I get to cover the sport now, and guys like you have had these epiphanies, have had these huge life changes, but you were so uh, pitted against each other in your primes, you know? And, and then sometimes that stuff got personal, sometimes that stuff got mean, but it, the competition was at an elite level. Do you have any desire even to reach out to like an Oscar De La Hoya or your, your rivals at the time? Like Oscar, I'm always available, man. You know, I wish you nothing but the best in life. Um, demons are difficult, what do I know? The demons that I, that we have, you know, because I'm not going to exclude myself like I didn't, like I've been Mr. Perfect. I'm not, what do I'm not. But if you need me, if you need me one day to pray for you and you want to be delivered from anything, what do anything, whatever it is, I promise you that God will do it. We 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 already squashed the beef. I told you about you know when we when we met and um and, you know after the fight that you said you were, when I when I, when we were trying to meet to see if we would get a review we would give me a rematch. But if you need anything from me, I have no problem. You know trying to help you out in any way, shape, or form, get you close to God. And guess what? To me, I'm not, I'm, 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 I'll never be ashamed to say that I serve God because the Bible says that if you're ashamed of God, he'll be ashamed of you. And if you don't know God and you, and you want to know him, hey amen, I extend the invitation, Vatu, that if you want to, if you want to go with me to church, and talk to my pastor. I go ahead. I have a pastor here in Vegas now. You're more than welcome with me. Let's take a look at the up and coming fighters that are of this day. The guys who are just now reaching their prime. Is there anybody out there that really excites you that you love to watch? When that guy is fighting, you're definitely going to be in front of the TV or ringside. Um, <laughs> just my boys. <laughs> just my boys. You know, just seeing them, you know, do what their daddy did. And, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I had some other fighters before, and God took them away. And I'm like, why Why are these guys, like, are so unloyal? Mm. They're so unloyal. And I was always loyal to my trainer. And I got them contracts and everything, and then they end up leaving you. But I honestly feel that God put it. This in my heart. That God was like, why, why do you 
want to work with these guys when I, you got your world champions at your house. You got the superstars at the crib. I got a superstar uh, daddy, so you got the superstars at the crib. And and so that's what I'm doing right now. I don't I don't really train nobody. I have I'm one I train one 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 other kid, um, Chris Rocha. I made him a national champion ten times. So I'm gonna keep, continue to work with him. He's a young kid. He's only 15. But you know that I'm gonna start working with other fight. I don't know. We'll see. But right now I'm dedicated. I'm from to 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 my boys. And they come first. And so at the end of the day, that's where, that's where we're at. The Mexican tradition in boxing carries forward. There's always stars in the sport from that country. Canelo being the face of boxing at the time right now. Um, when you watch his career progress and the way he's handling it, uh, what do you think? Man. I'm... I, I, I was a definitely a you know to me my, my idol is El Gran Campeón Mexicano Julio César Chavez, so I can't tell you that he's still not my idol. He's still my idol now, but we got to say like like us Mexicans say, hablando al Chile, talking real spit. There's not been a Mexican fighter that's done the things that Canelo has done. And I'm a Chavez, and Chavez is my idol. So you got to respect to respect what respect is due. I would be less than solid to say that he's not the best Mexican fighter that Mexico has ever had. Yeah. Who else has done what he's done? Multiple weight classes. And yeah, and there's been Mexican, many Mexican fighters who have gone up in the but. Uh, five was it five? Is it five world, world five uh, weight classes that he became world champion? Who's done that? And can, you know what I mean? Uh, we have Ryan Garcia on Saturday night is at the start of his career in the sense of trying to accomplish and gain world titles, and he was in the gym even with Canelo and using the same trainer. And on Saturday night is really a moment of truth for him. When you see him at this stage of his career, what are you thinking? I'm, I'm, I know he's, I think he's built for it. You know what I mean? Um, he's built for it. And um, like I said, with, with that fight against Campbell and he got knocked down and he faced adversity and he got up to win by knockout, that's big. You know what I mean? So I think he's built for it. Now we haven't seen, like I said, we haven't seen uh, Davis in any trouble yet, or he's been wobbled a little bit from early, but nothing that, you know, we don't know, we, we don't know what's going to happen with, when Garcia hits him with something. And then let's say he gets knocked down. Let's say he gets put on Queer Street. Then what's going to happen? We we don't know yet. yet. But we saw what, what Ryan did. We already saw the example. So we got to wait and see for this Saturday. Lastly, if you could change one thing about boxing now, or even in, in the days when you were in your prime, like what is it that boxing either needs to change or needs to add to be the sport it should and could be? I think boxing is great. I think I love boxing. There's nothing going to be like, you know, that. I mean, you could always add a little bit more entertainment to it, but people are there, there, there to fight, you know what I mean? And, you know... And really, all the 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 twenty four sevens are been continued. We need to continue with those because those really hype up people. Those really like, oh, it's gonna be a great fight. Oh, oh, you who do you think's gonna win? And oh my God, you know, you, you see what he said about him. Did you see what he said about him? So it really brings a lot of more um, attention to it. So I think they need to continue to do that more often because I didn't really see too much uh, on this. Uh, I did see a few, um, you know, 24-7 with, with, uh, with uh, Javante, but I didn't see too many of with, 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 Tank, with Tank. You are one of the best promoters of fights <laughs> that has been in history. Uh, you, boy, you didn't need a bunch of television shows or social media to promote a fight. Whenever Fernando Vargas was in it, you knew there was going to be trash talk, there was going to be excitement, it was going to be explosive. What would you 
like your legacy to be for, you know, kids the age of your children and people who are coming to the sport now who maybe didn't get to see you and watch you in your prime. And those who did, when they taught Fernando Vargas, what would you like the lasting legacy to be? Well, you know, I've, I've had people, you know, grown men fall on my knees and when, after my fight with Trinidad, you know, and um, cry and be like, man, I never met nobody with balls. I never seen nobody with the courage and the balls that you've had, that you've shown in the ring. Crying, tattooed dudes, tattooed. I, I thought that I, you know, I, that I failed my people and I, I was so let down. You know what I mean? Um, that 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 I thought that I failed my people because I got. I, I mean, I didn't get knocked out because then nobody comes to attend, but they, then they stopped the fight. Um, and I just felt so bad. I felt so embarrassed. I said, and then everybody goes, "You don't even know, bro." Everybody loves you. They never seen nobody fight with so much balls like that in their life. And and me, I don't even and I don't even remember the fight. I just remember bits and pieces of the fight. And so that shows that that, that definitely shows that what type of man I am on the inside because I've been known that. And that's what the type of man you gotta always know you are. And I've always been. I don't remember getting knocked down five times, getting up about five. I remember getting knocked down once. And so at the end of the day. You know what? I'm just grateful to the fans for all their love and support. And now they got, uh, uh, you know, uh, a legacy with my boys that that that, that is could be in, put into place if if they they want to do it right. And you know, my boys have so far shown me that they do want to do it right. So there's times is like any anybody, you know, any family that they end up fighting and and like. You know, they just go out and go party and go hang out because they got already everything right here and handed to them. Mm-hmm. They, you know, at me at 12 years old, I was walking to Colonia three miles one way, three hours, three miles another way, one hour, one, one way to get to the gym, one hour to get back home. I had nobody to support me. Nobody, they got all the support in the world and they got a name already. So, because of what, not with that, I tell them, you, have, you guys haven't done shit. I did all the work, but. That's when people go, well, you kids are just there because of you. Oh, you dumb motherfucker. <laughs> of course. What do you expect? What would you do if, you know, you're, you're a reporter, you're a journalist, and your son wants to be a journalist, to Radio Rahim? What are you going to tell him? I got you. That's right. Well, you're not going to be like, no, nah, fuck that. Don't do, I'm not going to help you. No. He's your son, right? You're going to go out there and be like, I'm going to make you make sure that it's easier for you but you got to be dedicated to this, son. You, it's going to be easier for you, but you're going to get all the perks that, that your daddy didn't get. And because your daddy's already an established reporter, you're going you're gonna to get those perks, but you got to stay dedicated to your craft. Aren't you going to help him out? Absolutely. Okay, then. <laughs> then what the fuck are you guys telling me? Yeah, your kids are only there because of you. Yeah, motherfuckers. What, who else, who else, who else going to be there for? Who else? Well, Fernando, partially, I'm only here because of you. (laughs) Watching these fights that you had and being inspired by the balls that you showed and the greatness that you reached for and on occasion achieved and even in defeat, being able to hold your chin up high and come back on your shield and battle another day. That's the kind of inspiration that put me right here in this sport, talking to a guy like you. I'm so happy that you're happy. Thank you. And it's happy. a pleasure and an honor Thank to you, speak Ray, to the Ray legend. Ryan. Thank you, Radio Rahim. I appreciate that. Thank you, Fernando Vargas. Thank you.